Hi, Alexa. Okay, let's Hi, copy. Japan. So, what do you have? Oopsie. Yeah, the problem that I don't know how to solve. P plus 48 equal to 8 minus square root of P. Okay, so your idea was what? Show me what your idea was. I think that you should do this. P plus 48 is equal to 64 minus P. Okay, that's what everyone else is going to do, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a I over here, and we're going to look together. So let's keep on solving the way you're solving it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so then 2P... is equal to one six. So P is equal to eight. All right. Okay, so if this were correct, if it's correct, when we sub it back in there, what do we have? Let's double check it here. So you have P equals to 8, right? Mm -hmm. 8 plus, here, I'll have you finish it. 60, 48, uh huh, equals to 8 minus radical P. Good, which is 8. Okay, so this part is what? So then it should be the square root of 56. Mm hmm. Equal to. You got it? Um, two radical of two. Good, all right. Radical two, if you, you don't have a calculator probably, radical two, this number I remembered, I've memorized, is roughly 1.4. Okay, what about this side? Okay. It's 7 times 8, 4 times 1, 4. It's B equal to 2 times the square root of 14. Uh, yep, okay. So I have a calculator here, which I know you don't, so I'm going to tell you what the radical 14 is, okay? Radical 14 is equal to 14 is equal to 3.74. Okay? So do you have okay. left to equal to right? Uh... So that's about. I want to say that they're not correct. Why not? Let's see. So two times. I want to round up to three times three point seven. That's fine. Is equal to eight. Minus 1.4 or 2.8. So, uh-huh, 2.8, uh-huh. This side you have 7.4, this side. Right? Uh-huh, this side what do you have? 5.2. Uh-huh. So, what happened? That's good. You realize it, right? Now, before we go on, let me let me show you um, what happens to this one. Let's see if you have A plus B times A plus B. This, you know, that's equal to A plus B squared, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, 
let's do the foil. Show me what you have. Multiply it up. Excellent. So this is equal to when you collect those two together. Okay, very good. So the first term is squared. The last term is also squared. Kind of like you guessed, right? Yeah. This is what we call the cross term. So the power does not distribute like a multiplication because this is the first part. This is the second part. We have another additional item. It's called a cross term. So when you have a plus b squared, right, you can't just distribute the power in there. There's a cross term there. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at why that cross term is important. See, we remember back here, I told you I'm putting an i here. Let's see what happens. Okay. What you did is you squared this side. Yeah. To get rid of the radical, right? Then you squared this side. Right? Right. When you square this side, the radical falls off. What happens on this side? Did you distribute the power in there? This one should be plus p. That's one problem. But then if you do a plus p, watch what happens. p cancels with p. Are you telling me 4080 equal to 64? No. No? So, come back here again. You have a plus b, right? Squared. It does not equal to a squared plus b squared. So you need this guy. That's right. There's a cross term that completely missed. That's this chunk. Do you see it? Yeah. Tell me what you see. So this thing's important. You can't forget about it. Mm, a little more explanation. Well, if you forget about this one, it gets lonely and it makes your problem incorrect. True. Okay, so before we get down to a new uh, whiteboard, because we're kind of running out of room, let's open this one up the old-fashioned way. Let's see what happens. Okay, now you try it. Okay. 64. Yep. Why is 8P? Why is it 8P? Nine. There we go. Minus, uh-huh, 8 radical P again. Very good. P, uh-huh. Then plus... P. Plus P, that's right, because P. minus radical times minus radical give you P, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 64, you had that. See, 64, you had that, right? Plus P... You have that. This is the term that you didn't have. Hmm. Tell me what you see. I think you saw something. I believe I forgot about the um, minus 2, 8 times square root of p. Or minus 16 square root of p. Excellent. What do we call this thing? Cross term. That's right. This is a very, very common error. So hopefully this is the last time you'll make it, right? Okay. You got to remember the power does not distribute. Do you want to know why it doesn't distribute? What do you mean? Well, you see the power here, the two, doesn't just distribute it nicely like multiplication. Do you know? Do you want to know a quick word to remember that? Okay. Okay. Remember way at the beginning, your teacher teaches you the panda? 
the order of operation? Yep. Okay. P stands for? Uh huh. E for? Exponent. Uh huh. Then you have my for multiplication there mm -hmm. and Sally, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Now, watch this adding. Where is the adding on the ladder? On the bottom. Let's circle that. Can you circle that? Very good. Where is the power? Exponential. Mm hmm You see how they are not next to each other? Yeah. When they're not next to each other, you can't distribute them nicely. They're not cousins. Does that make okay. sense? So yeah. if I have three times two, which is six, right? Squared. This I can distribute because where's my multiplication on the ladder? Say right here. Can you circle it on the ladder here? Oh, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. This and this are right next to each other. You see it? Therefore, mm -hmm. multiplication, I can distribute it nicely, which is 9 times 4, right? Right. Which is 6 squared, just like we said here. You see it? Mm -hmm. If it's a multiplication right next to the exponential, I can distribute it nicely. Not if it's adding and subtracting. Tell me what you see. It looks like you saw something now. These two are related, but you fall apart. That's right.